Hey there friends, Cynthia here in my quilt lab and today I'm working on month three of the block of the month Solar. That's this beautiful quilt right here. It's uh, hosted by Banyan Batik's North Cotton made by Bound by Quilting. Big shout out to Adirondack Quilts, the shop I work at, for hosting this with me. Let's dig in and see what month three is all about. Alright, so this block is called King's Crown 1. 1 meaning there's going to be multiples of this. You will be seeing this block only in different color combinations in future episodes along the trip of this wonderful block of the month. So be sure that you hold on to this video because you're going to be coming back to it in the future. That said, we're going to be making eight of these blocks in this color formation. That's right, we warmed you up in months one and two and now we're stacking multiple blocks in month three. And let's take a look at the fabric that we're going to need for this block. All right, so you can see all the pieces I have just this just for one block. Remember we're making eight of them, so don't worry. All those multiple cuttings are going to multiple blocks. It's not going to just one block. So let's talk about what we got here. Uh, we have fabric two, several rectangles, eight of them. That's going to be that sash right there in the middle. We have fabric six. It actually tells you to make squares, and then you're going to cut those squares in half. And that makes that lower corner, that nice, pretty, kind of light cream, light beige look. In fabric nine, that's that pretty purple. We're going to be making squares, so there's my squares, two of them for each block, one, two. And moving on to fabric number 13, we have a couple of different rectangles. There's this long one and this small one, and I will say I used a, uh, a scant quarter inch when I did this side because my, my block ended up being just a hair, just a smidgen short, so I redid this seam. But I'll, I'll tell you about that again when we get to that spot, which is really soon. And fabric 16, that's all the other pieces. You'll see we have squares that match the purple ones. And then you'll have two different squares that you'll cut in half again, one at two and three quarters, and then um, some other ones at two and five eighths that you'll be cutting in half to get these half triangles. Yes, there's a lot of three eighths, five eighths cutting, so please make sure that you're paying attention to your ruler and you're cutting because it's going to be really important to be accurate. If you want to make sure that your quarter inch seam is real good, now's a chance because it's going to be really important when we get to these uh, bias cuts right over here. And uh, let's just dig in and see how we put this block together. Let's go. So this is the finished block, but I like to lay out my pieces in an exploded version of that block to kind of give me an idea or a reference to keep coming back to. That way I make sure that I put everything, I piece everything the way I ought to. Um, you'll see in the instructions that it's going to start with the two fabric uh, 13 pieces and we're going to add triangles to each of those. And I, like I said, I like laying it out like this so I don't accidentally put the triangles in the wrong direction or on the wrong end. Uh, the nice thing about batiks is there's not necessarily a front and a back. So if that happens, hopefully I can switch them around. But this is the other reason I like to do it is just to have a nice visual. We're visual people, aren't we? Visual and tactile. So let's talk about what we're doing. We're going to add these two triangles here. These are the squares that worth two and three quarters cut in half. The squares that are two and five eighths, three of them, those are in the middle. So don't confuse those two. Just wanna make sure to point it out. I like to just flip those triangles over and I'm keeping that nice straight edge over on this side because when we press it back open, we want a nice straight line here and a nice straight line here. And I'll throw a couple of pins in, that way I don't lose them on the way to the machine. One and two. And then let's talk about what we have here in the middle. I'm going to move these two pieces out of the way because I really want you to see what it looks like here. So I want you to visualize this as three rows, three pieces, two pieces, one piece. And that's kind of what it looks like 
in the the pictures as well you're going to piece these together again keeping that nice straight line there piece these two pieces together again keeping that straight line there so that you have the four rows now if we go back to that fabric 13. now there are no directions for pressing so press which way you you feel most comfortable i pressed one direction on one row and the other direction on the other row that way they'll nest there in the center let me just show you that real quick this one's going this way this one's going that way this way and this way so there you go but feel free to do what you want you can even open them up again this is an intermediate uh, block of the month so it thinks that you have the experience to get this done and and, and no quote police here i can support every decision i can argue every decision i want you to do what works best for you so I'm going to take these to the machine and then we're going to come back and talk about piecing it together and then adding those last two pieces. So to the sewing machines, my friends. Okay, back from the machine. So let's just do a quick review. This is the step one. And like I mentioned earlier, I did do a scant quarter of an inch seam on this row right here. This is step two. And you'll see step three was these all separated. So what this looks like this set aside is where we are at step five. So I'm just going to flip these two pieces over so I can talk about them. See how I See press how them I different ways? It's going to come in real handy when I go to sew them together because that's going to nest up. The next step is to add these two together. Add these two together. Combine combine and you'll see that in the next couple of steps so I'll take a few pictures as I go and then we'll talk about adding that last piece and moving on to the other half of the block to the sewing machine all right I just want to come back and talk about how I pin these two pieces together a little tip right there so like I said there I'll flip them both over so you can see they're going to uh, nest this way oops I got it backwards so when you put them together see how they're going opposite ways that one's folded that way that one's folded that way so I'll kind of butt them up next to each other they'll have a natural uh, fitting spot and I'll take a pin and I'll put my pin right through the thread of that top one and if I've matched them up perfectly and I have the pin will come out the other side through that pin and that way I know for certain that they are pinned correctly that they're going to match up really nicely the corners are going to be really pretty and when I take this to the machine and start stitching, I'm not going to take that pin out until my needle has gone through all four layers, the four layers of the folded part and the four layers of the top. So once I've gotten to like right here, then I'll stop, I'll take my pin out and finish the rest of the seam. That way I'm certain that there's not going to be no jostling even underneath the foot of the sewing machine. All right, let me take this to the machine and I'll be right back. All right, so I got that step finished. That means we finished step six. Let's move on to step seven. So step seven says you need your, your pretty blue fabric because we're going to line this up next to the unit that we just made. I'm going to point out that all of these triangles are on the bias. So I sprayed this whole unit with a little best press or you can use a little starch and that's just to help it you know, stay in place and not stretch. Um, just a little tip, even the, the authors say that at one point and that you want to find the center of the strip here and center it on the block. So that's what my little pins are. It's just kind of a an obvious little mark. I think this is about 14 inches or so. And I'm just gonna take one out and put it in place. You're gonna take this to the sewing machine now. 
If you don't like the dog ears and want to take them off before you sew it, feel free. Um, it's, it doesn't bother me all that much. Sometimes I like to clean it up. Sometimes I don't. It's up to you. And I'll be right back after this team and we'll talk about square, doing some preliminary squaring and adding that last piece So to the sewing machine. I did want to mention one more thing before I head to that machine. I am sewing with the blue strip down on the bottom because it's not bias fabric that feed dog will feed it a little easier and I'm using uh, a FOF machine which means I'm using the IDT which is sort of like a walking foot which helps that top layer move a little uh, a little more smoothly as well but the reason I'm putting this on top is not just because of the pieces but it's also because I want to hit all of these little little X's right here because that's the quarter of an inch and you'll notice I've put a little line to show where it is because that's folded over and I can't see it so I know where to aim for on these two folds as well that way we get a nice crisp uh, points when we go to fold it open okay now to the sewing machine all right, so this is half a step seven. Let me flip it over so you can see which way I pressed it. There you go. Pressed towards that dark side. It also means I don't have quite as much bulkiness to have to press over, which is always nice. So the next part is about doing a little bit of pre-squaring up before we put the triangle on. And in the directions it says, Trim the edges at a 90 degree angle with the sides of step six. And step six, of course, is this, uh, this first unit that we did. He says you can use uh, the squ a square ruler and put the point up here in, in the corner and use it. Um, in our shop instructions, it also recommends a nine and a half inch square ruler. Well, I don't have a nine and a half inch square ruler, but I do have a 10 and a half. So I uh, added a little quarter inch tape to kind of help me narrow in on the nine and a half. That's this line right here to help square it up. Sorry about the shine from the lights. So what I'm gonna do, I'll, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I like to use all the tools available. So I'm going to use my mat as well and line it up on the mat behind me, that quarter of an inch. I'm going to do it with my mat as well. Uh, I'm not going to worry about uh, these sides, these two sides being completely nice and straight because we are going to come back and then we are going to square up at the end. I'm mostly concerned about this and this. So I am lining the nine and a half up there. And I am over in a little bit of a couple of areas. It's not the per most perfect seams, but you know, better done than perfect. And once I like what I have, I can go ahead and swipe the top and I'm sorry, you can't see the bottom. Let me move the camera a little bit. There we go. So now you can move the side and the bottom, all right? If you have a rotating mat, this is a great option for a rotating mat as well. With those two sides gone, you can put that ruler away and we're gonna attach this. So the same, same thing that we did, you wanna center those two pieces. So the easiest way to do a center on a triangle is just to kind of fold it in half and give it a little crease. So since you probably can't see that crease very well, let me throw a pin in where that crease is. So there's my crease right there. And then you can do the same thing with that or just give it a little measure. It's about eight and a half ish. So a half of eight and a half is four and a quarter, which is right there. And this triangle is just a smidgen bigger, which is good because like I said, we are going to be squaring up at the end. So I'm gonna put those together. Pin them, and then take this to the sewing machine and do this last seam. All right, so let me go do that, and I'll be back in just a moment. All right, I'm back. Let me show you. I actually just continue to press out, but you can press in as well. I think I did that on the other one. Let me check. Yeah, I did. Yeah, maybe I'll go back and, and 
and press towards the dark side, as they say. Um, but I don't think you can really see through it. So I love batiks. They're so they're so nice and beautiful, and I love the way they press. Anyway, let's get back to the idea of scoring this up. So in the instructions, it's going to tell you to trim to a nine and a half. And like I said in the previous part, um, if you have a nine and a half inch square or you want to go and get one, hey, now's your chance. I'm using a ten and a half inch square with some tape to show me to zoom in on that nine and a half. I'm also breaking out my rotary cutter to show that if you don't have even a square, you can just use a regular ruler and your mat. It's it's okay. I give you permission to use your mat. Um, and so I'll do a couple of different cuts. So just as a, a I just want to show that right here that we know that this blue is perfect right because that's what we've cut already so that's what i'm aiming up on the half inch and the nine okay so i know that's perfect but if you look down here i'm a little off over here that's supposed to be nine and a half and i'm a little off over here at that edge that's supposed to meet that line so now's the chance for me to break out that ruler and you'll notice that that ruler also has a diagonal so i'm going to line that diagonal on top of the block and I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and flush with this side and make sure it's hitting that nine and a half right here on that blue and I'm just gonna swipe that top really quick now at this point you know that edge is completely perfect and you could switch out to your other ruler or just continue here since I already have this down let me do this edge There we go. So we have two sides that are perfect. And this is what I love about that rotating mat. Look, I don't have to touch the block. All I have to do is be careful about moving the ruler. So now at this point, I'll uh, just switch out to my other ruler so that you can see you don't have to have a square ruler. You just wanna make sure that you're using all your tools available so that you do get a nice nine and a half inch square block. So there's one side and this side. I love my rotating mat. Anytime I have to square up a bunch of stuff, this really makes life simpler. And there we go. So there's another finished block. That means I got two of mine done. Remember, you're going to be making this block eight times. So after you've done one, um, if you feel confident enough to do each step of all the other ones as you go, I'm a big believer in doing one block at a time because I don't always have a big set schedule of many hours and I can do one block in, in 20 minutes. All right, so that's the end of month three. Go make eight of these blocks, and I'll see you in month four as we continue on this block of the month of the Solar Quilt. See you next month, and keep quilting. Hey there, my quilty friends. I just want to jump online and say hi. Thanks so much for subscribing. Thanks so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate you, and I'm showcasing my two little lab assistants. That's Maxie right there, and that's Mira. So if you ever hear any jingle bells or a little tappy toes or whining, you know, you know my assistants are asking for a little assistance of their own, if you know what I mean. Thanks for joining me. Please hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe. Love you guys. Keep quilting. I'll see you next time in my quilt lab. Bye-bye.